Thinking of upgrading your Ryzen CPU? But what about that AM4 motherboard? What kind of benefits can you get from upgrading your motherboard? Let's find out. What I'm looking to find out is, is there a reason to upgrade your AM4 motherboard? To find out, I tested three motherboards. The ASRock X370 Killer SLI, the ASRock B450M Pro 4, and the ASRock X470 Tai Chi. And I tested that with three CPUs, the Ryzen 5 1500X, the Ryzen 5 2600, and the Ryzen 5 3600. And with that, I tested three kits of RAM. Two sticks of Corsair Vengeance 3600 with the timings of 18, 22, 22, 42. And two sticks of G-Skill Aegis 3000 with the timings of 16, 18, 18, 38. And four sticks of G-Skill Aegis 3000 with the timings of 16, 18, 18, 38. I started by finding a stable overclock for each CPU on each motherboard. Once I found a stable overclock, I took temperature readings of the CPU using hardware monitor, and I used my digital thermometer with K-type thermal couplers to take readings from the top of the MOSFETs and chokes. So yes, I took off the VRM heat sinks and placed the thermal couplers, and then reattached the VRM heat sinks. And finally, I found a stable memory frequency using the XMP. If the rated speed proved to be unstable, I reduced the memory frequency while keeping the timings the same. All the testing was done on an open air test bench. The CPU cooler I used was the Fractal Design Celsius S24 running at full speed. The GPU was the Zotac GTX 1070 Mini. The power supply is the EVGA 650GQ. And the OS drive is a 250 gig Western Digital Blue SATA 3 M.2 SSD. Now, before we move on to the charts, if you like what I'm doing here, please subscribe to the channel and give a like to the video. It helps a lot. Let's see if we can get to 500 subscribers and a preemptive thank you. And now on to the charts. So up first is the Ryzen 5 1500X. Uh, and as you can clearly see, it doesn't really matter what motherboard you have. You pretty much get the same results. 3900 megahertz at a 1.4 volts. And for the Ryzen 5 2600, we have pretty much the same thing. There is a slight difference for the killer SLI that was able to have the voltage at a 1.3125. But both the Pro 4 and the Tai Chi had the voltages at 1.325. So, not much difference, or any at all. And now for the Ryzen 5 3600. Much of the same. All motherboards required the same voltage to run the CPU at 4200 megahertz. So as you can see from the charts, there is no meaningful reason to upgrade for the sole purpose of overclocking your CPU. So up next, the temperature testing. For the Ryzen 5 1500X, although the X370 Killer did have the highest CPU temperature, it also had the lowest MOSFET and choke temperatures. The B450M Pro 4 had the highest MOSFET and choke temperatures, with the X470 Tai Chi landing in the middle. For the Ryzen 5 2600, here we see a much higher VRM temperature in general for both the MOSFETs and chokes over the Ryzen 5 1500X. Now this could be due to the Ryzen 1500X being a 4-core, 8-thread part, relative to the 2600, which is a 6-core, 12-thread part. Now again, the X370 Killer motherboard had the lowest MOSFET and choke temperatures, with the B450M Pro 4 having the highest. Now with the Ryzen 5 3600, we see much higher CPU temperatures over the 2600. Now with that being said, the MOSFET and choke temperatures are significantly lower with still the X370 Killer having the lowest temperatures. And we still have the B450M Pro 4 having the highest MOSFET and choke temperatures. Now for the memory testing, the Corsair Vengeance 3600 kit was not actually able to run at its rated speed on any of the three motherboards using the Ryzen 5 1500X. The X370 Killer motherboard was also not able to run 
the two dim or four dim kit of G Skills memory at the rated speed. Now the B450M Pro 4 was able to run the two dim kit at the rated speed, but the four dim kit was only able to run at 2400 megahertz. Now the X470 Tai Chi was able to run both the two dim and four dim kits at its rated speed of 3000 megahertz. For the Ryzen 5 2600, we see that the Corsair Vengeance 3600 kit was only able to run at 3200 megahertz, while both the 2DIM and 4DIM kits of the G-Skill were able to run at 2866. The B450M Pro 4 was able to run the Corsair Vengeance 3600 kit at 3533, which was the fastest of all the motherboards with this CPU, and was able to run the to dim G-Skill kit at its rated speed of 3000 megahertz. Although the 4 dim kit was only able to run at 2733 megahertz, which is the lowest of all these motherboards with this CPU. Now the X470 Tai Chi was able to run the Corsair Vengeance 3600 kit at 3400 megahertz, and both the 2 dim and 4 dim kits of the G-Skill memory at its rated speed of 3000 megahertz. Moving on to the Ryzen 5 3600, both the 2DIM kit of Corsair Vengeance and the 2DIM kit of the G-Skill was only able to run at 2933, which is for the Corsair kit quite a drop off. The 4DIM kit of the G-Skill was able to run at 2866 MHz. Now moving along to the B4M Pro 4, everything was able to run at its rated speeds as well as for the X470 Tai Chi motherboard. Everything was able to run at its rated speeds. So my final thoughts, I guess. Um, now for the actual overclocking of the CPU, I wasn't overly surprised that all the motherboards worked out to be pretty much the exact same. Now seeing the results for the temperatures of the MOSFETs and chokes was slightly surprising, being that the heat sink for the X470 Tai Chi does seem to be a much heavier and beefier. Uh, now this could have something to do with just the sheer airflow over it because of the large plastic piece that's on the back of the Tai Chi. This could be obstructing full coverage of the heatsink. Uh, obviously the smaller heatsinks for the B450M Pro 4 did limit the amount of cooling that they could provide. It was still well within standards and recommendations and whatnot, but it was significantly higher, especially with the 2600. And for memory, the X470 Tai Chi takes the crown. The X370 board really doesn't seem to be able to keep up. I'm not sure if this is something to do with the BIOS or something that's actually hardwired into the board. But with how much Ryzen loves fast memory, it really seems to make sense to go for a higher end board. Now I know this isn't that large of a sample size, but I am looking at testing some more motherboards. Uh, I do actually have an MSI B350 motherboard that I can rip out of my daughter's computer for a day or two. Uh, I also did just order a second B450 motherboard. This one is from Gigabyte. Uh, I would still definitely like to get a X570, probably more on the low end to see how that stacks up, but that's for another video. And that's all I have for this one, all the normal stuff. If you like the video, you know what to do. Subscribe, click that bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. Uh, I'm now on Twitter, Hardware for Gamers, or at Hardware for Gamers. And as always, thanks for watching. See you next time.